thank you for putting this in like phonetics for me. So Ho wow, that's Jin very, that's very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, edited genes of two embryos in 2018 to be more resistant to HIV. Should corporations, scientists, parents, or nations be able to patent the genes of their people? And then um, there was more on Patreon that I'll just read out loud right here. From a Chinese perspective, my mom often said that my flesh belonged to her in a joking manner because she made it. For background, the process of meiosis mixes and matches existing sequences. Occasionally, this creates unique mutations unseen in the general population. Should the results of those natural processes be patented? Say a biotech company creates a process or algorithm that creates new sequences. Can those new sequences be subject to patenting? Should it be a piecemeal approach where some sequences are patented and others not? Or should only procedures be patented and not the sequences themselves? This is such a high level question that I don't know enough about. I think this would, would just stop progress. I think like we, this would just limit the amount of the research we could do. Like, I don't think like, I don't think like the, a nation, um, but should core, uh, scientists, patents, or nations be able to patent the genes of their people? But like their people, like who, whose people? like people shouldn't be able to be owned like just like you can't be owned your genetic material shouldn't be able to be owned as well like i just think like this is gonna just throw unnecessary regulation that is going to limit the work that we could do like i i, I really don't think like we should have any attachment to the like a sense of ownership to the sequencing of some genetic materials in my body like i am not my genes okay I am, everybody is way beyond their genes, okay? Your, the genetic material in your body is, um, is a form of knowledge that it, it contains so much information, not just about you, but, but a lot of people uh, before you and about an entire group of people that that knowledge, if it was revealed to scientists, if they had access to it, they would be able to effectively provide medicine and for all of us in a way at some point that it would be unimaginable if that information was not accessible to everybody, right? To, to scientists. I, I just think like getting like nations or organizations to be able to own that is just going to limit progress. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Weeding out these things, weeding out genetic diseases is good. Like, yeah, I think like, I think like we already have enough protection for people not wanting to share their genetic material, but I think there should be more encouragement that more people do share it because it would just help society. I don't think anybody should be able to own it. I, I think like it is, it, you know, it's just going to get in the way of progress. There are a lot of ways where it can be really misused and not where it harms the individual um, because they have been de-identified, but because the conclusions made about the group that that individual belongs to has harmful consequences on that community. So for example, there was, um, I don't know if it was genetic or some other form of testing, but there was articles published about this indigenous community in Alaska and their propensity for alcoholism um, based on a bunch of testing that was done. And because of that, um, you know, it's not like any one person was picked out and said out of the data set and said, you are an alcoholic, blah, we're not going to work with you. No, but there were consequences to their larger group. And it actually manifested in companies not investing into that community. Um, so this is something I studied in one of my internships, um, when I was in university and the way that genetic material is studied and the conclusions that we bring that we talk about for groups um particularly historically oppressed groups it needs to be very very sensitive um and yeah it, it can it can really lead to harm atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship.
Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.